So how then do we create these kinds of designed experiences for learning and in education? How do we take people who are novices in a domain and then help them become active participants in an area and maybe even knowledge producers? And this is one of the real core challenges we've been working on. So to explain this, I want to take a game that's called Citizen Science. Now this game came about because in role-playing games, the kind you buy off the shelf and you play for fun, all of the time you do things like, I'm going to save the world or I'm going to save this village. And we thought it would be interesting to take that same sort of narrative structure and say, could you use information to save a lake or a community that happens to be built on a real life one using scientific principles as a way to do it? So in this game, you're a kid and your mission is to save Lake Mendota. Now Lake Mendota is a lake in Madison, Wisconsin. In the very near future, Lake Mendota may become eutrophic. And what that means is it may become so overrun with sediment that it become quite cloudy, kind of foul smelling, much less of a diverse ecosystem than it is today. And already it's very well on, on this path. What happens in this game is that you as a player travel to the year 2020 when the lake is totally unswimmable. So it's become totally overrun with algae. And what you do is get to see just kind of how nasty this has become. And what you have to do is go back in time, learn how the lake got this way, and then see if you can't change its outcome. So what you do is that you go to the docks. Again, you start at the shores. You, you talk to some swimmers. You find out a little bit about the lake. Um, and the, the content of the game then becomes limnology, which is lake science, situated within broader ecology. So it's some broader kind of deeper ecological concepts that apply not just to lakes, but to deserts and forests and other systems. But then also it's overlapping with this sort of civic engagement. So um, if you look at a lot of the standards in science and social studies, obviously, uh, a lot of what we want to do is help kids um, and citizens, really, um, understand the communities that they live in and take a bit of ownership over it and kind of stewardship. So in the game, you traverse the shores of Lake Mendota, you talk to scientists, you talk to anglers, and something we thought that was really important, particularly in regards to kids, is not having this be a game where you're a professional scientist, but having it be a game where you're an ordinary citizen. In fact, you're a kid a little bit older than them. Um, it's aimed at middle school kids. In order to try to see, could we build a game that actually gets kids involved in doing science and becoming active participants in the world? So we embed digital tools that are based on the real tools that scientists use, and then get give kids access to them. You take a boat out into the middle of the lake, and you take readings from different uh, parts of the lake in order to explore different sampling strategies and, and understand really the overall health of the lake. As you start to take readings, you start to get data that go into your inventory. So just as any um, uh, adventure game and many RPGs have inventories where you carry around stuff, in this game you carry around things like Secchi Discs, but then you also carry the readouts and the notes that you've taken. You then take those to different people around the world of this game, and then you use those in order to make arguments to, to argue about how you think the lake should unfold and what you think should happen to it. We've also embedded in the game um, a little simulation that actually simulates how these different forces in Lake Mendota act. Um, one of the challenges that we had was that this is a game that has a narrative, that has a, a kind of a scripted outcome, but we wanted to give that sense of simulation and playfulness and ability to tinker around with variables. So stuck in there is a full kind of lake simulation that players can use in order to explore how different variables interact. So the core gameplay involves these cycles of talking to people, learning information about the lake that way, learning how people use it, collecting evidence both through tools and through their, the, the simulated lake globe, and then completing arguments with people um, in order to try to have the lake um, become adapted to how you think it should go. So you use the data and the evidence that you've collected to make arguments to further your agenda for the lake. Now these are, are uh, standards that are in science classes that are pretty hard to teach. It's really hard to get people involved in doing kind of authentic inquiry, but then also to engage in real deep arguments about it. And that, those are the things that the game is set up to do. So to do more than just teaching you about lake ecology, but to get you to think about engaging in arguments about the lake and to think about it as a system. We wanted to dig in a little deeper though and see would the game really prepare you to learn about lake ecology better than through traditional methods. And what this is leveraging is a concept that Daniel Schwartz at Stanford and John Bransford have called preparation for future learning. And the way that this theory goes, this theory says that meaningful learning experiences, the kind that we're trying to produce through game experiences, really deep ones where you get a, a true sense of a domain, Part of why they work so well is that they prepare you to learn things in the future better. The hypothesis is that playing a game such as Citizen Science might mean so that when you encounter a text in the future, whether it's a news article or maybe a reading about Lake Mendota, would help you understand that better than if you had um, not such a deep experience of this subject matter. 
So to study this, what we did is we set up a classic kind of control experiment study. In both cases, people took the pretest on day one, but then on day two, half of the group would have a, a traditional kind of experience where they would read through a, a packet of readings about the lake. And it's all readings taken pretty much from the game, just about Lake Mendota and lake eutrophication, uh, designed to just explain it in a very typical kind of way. Meanwhile, the other group, the experimental group, would play the game. And what we wanted to do is, is do an immediate post-test to see what each one got out of it. But then on day three, flip it so that the people who had the reading packet play the game, and the people who play the game read the packet, and then see whose scores went up the most. And it, sure enough, in this group, particularly with the advanced students, we found that it happened just as Dan and John would have predicted. We find that the group in the experimental group went up some from playing the game. Meanwhile, the control group was held pretty steady. And what we observed in our naturalistic observations of the class is that the control group just wasn't very interested, right? So these kids weren't particularly interested in the lake. Um, they went up a little bit after playing the game, but even there, um, it, it was just, it wasn't as robust as, as situating it in this, in this way. So how do we think about building these kinds of learning experiences into integrated curriculum models? Like how do you build this into an after school center or a classroom or a training kind of situation? And what we try to do is think about using games as uh, Dan and John would suggest for as preparation for future learning. So the beginning phase is having a lot of uh, just game activity. So put people in the game, let them explore the domain, hopefully raise their interest and develop their interest in a, in a topic. But then outside of the game, having them do uh, readings and other activities that support their gameplay. This is the kind of thing that we would like to really try to support and get more happening. So the, the idea that you're using a game not just to learn about the underlying science, but then also to become an active participant in the world um, is the kind of thing that we're going for.